welcome and thank you for uh, coming along tonight. The, um, the talk falls into two halves, which are um, related, I suppose, uh, related in terms of manufacture. Um, the, um, the reason that I have an association with Milton Keynes and with Bletchley, actually, in particular, uh, is because um, since 1985, uh, I've been working with uh, one or two, one or other of small manufacturing companies in uh, Bletchley. First, a company called Chemco Fabrications, uh, and latterly, with a company called Twin Engineering. Um, although Gary Chapman, who runs Twin Engineering, is a consistent. Um, um, is consistent in the, bet, uh, between those two. Now, why did I go to Chemco? Uh, and I have no idea. Uh, it happened. Uh, in uh, 1984, uh, after a thing called the Sculpture Exhibition in uh, the Sculpture Show in London, uh, I was commissioned to uh, uh, make a proposal for a building on Euston Road, 250 Euston Road, the former home of Capital Radio, or as it, the, the home as it was then of Capital Radio. Uh, and I'd never done a large-scale commission. Um, uh, and uh, I came up with the idea, which you see up on the, uh, up on the screen there, on the uh, your <coughs> left um, it's for a, this large uh, uh, large structure the uh, the kind of bracket that holds it holds it together and lifts it up is a bit like a kind of pair of quotation marks uh, although it uh, also has uh, uh, a sort of ear and mouth uh, attached to it so the the tube in the center is a kind of megaphone. But it's also, I also wanted the tube to be uh, uh, a place that was a bit like a telescope. You could enter uh, and look up. So the, um, and it's, uh, uh, those, those were the kinds of ideas. This is a card model. And I began looking around for someone who, uh, who could tell me whether it was possible to make it. Uh, and for some reason or other, I think it was through uh, a firm called Pleisu, uh, which is still there, that uh, they said, uh, who had a relationship with Chemco, uh, they suggested that uh, I go to Chemco. And, uh, um, and I think I wrote some letters, and anyway, so uh, I ended up going to meet Derek Everston, who ran uh, uh, who ran Chemco, and uh, uh, talked to him about uh, about this project. And the thing is that when you're a young artist, uh, it's really hard to get anyone to take you seriously, um, or, or to believe that you might actually mean what you say. Uh, and what uh, what was kind of interest, interesting about Derek was that he uh, um, he was very you know, open from the start, and uh, um, al although nothing kind of came of this proposal, um, and it did, um, he did encourage me into thinking that it could be possible uh, to make this, whether it was or not, I don't, you know, I really don't know. Um, I mean, if you think about, if you look at the scale thing, this is quite a kind of uh, um, a big, uh, uh, a big structure, and uh, uh, it would have been disastrous in the rain because the rain would have run down the inside. Um, but anyway, you know that, uh, and I, you know, I made, I did make some smaller ones out of galvanized steel. That, um, uh, partly because um, uh, I got kind of interested in sheet metal anyway. From uh, uh, and um, visiting Chemco, I learned a bit about uh, uh, that some of the things that I've been thinking about in relationship to sheet metal were actually what 
um, what people did. And I, got, and I got also got very interested in the fabrication language and the ways in which people bold, uh, fold and bend uh, um, uh, things and the kinds of uh, um, uh, procedures they use for, for, doing, for, for doing stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, when, uh, this, is, this was 1984, um, so then uh, a year later, uh, it, uh, I was involved in a, uh, uh, a project um, with a filmmaker called John Chalenko and the architect Richard Rogers, uh, for which uh, had an exhibition attached to it at the Serpentine Gallery. Um, and it, uh, talking to Richard Ro Rogers and uh, 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 the idea, ideas about fabrication became uh, quite important. We went to a place in Paris called the, uh, the Maison de Verre by the um, architect Pierre Charot. Uh, and the, the building there is very, it's a modernist building, but it's really hand built. And uh, 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 the, uh, there were lots of things about the building that, uh, that interested me. Uh, and particularly the way in which a certain fantasy about uh, uh, fabrication also attached itself to the, to the building. So the, the, um, just as an example, uh, the building has five staircases in it, and each staircase is different. Um, so there's one that's like a boat, um, uh, a gangplank on a boat. There's one that's like a kind of um, a, a spiral staircase in a castle. There's another like a suspension bridge in the uh, in the Andes, there's a suspend one that's uh, um, uh, one that's kind of ordinary. Another one, the one that comes down like the staircase behind you over there, actually doesn't touch the ground. It kind of uh, it, it floats. So the uh, and each of the staircases involves a, a kind of a slightly different way of kind of stepping up uh, uh, up and down the building. And that different way of stepping is both uh, changes the way your bodily your body relates to the space. Uh, but also introduces kind of imaginative, uh, uh, um, uh, imaginative aspects to it. Introduces a kind of uh, introduces a kind of narrative, and that combination of kind of practicality and narrative uh, 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 intrigued me. And uh, the uh, and I came up with an idea for a, a two part work in the Serpentine Gallery uh, that um, was. Uh, um, uh, uh, between the inside and the outside, where and where I'd make the work on the inside, and I wanted to have the work on the outside made by somebody else. I wanted it to be something that I'd imagined and something that uh, uh, I then found a way to describe, and uh, um, uh, and had someone else build it. So the uh, uh, and these uh, these are early stages of the model. Uh, and this is uh, one of the kind of later, later drawings for it. But the, um, the people that I approached to, uh, to do this were, were Chemco. And because of that um, earlier contact, somehow uh, it kind of worked. I mean, I think it's the chemistry between individuals that, that works. So um, the, um, and I, uh, I also, uh, to be honest, I use Chemco as a kind of training ground. They kind of, uh, uh, I do some drawings and sort of say, "Is that good enough?" And uh, Derek would say, "Well, you know, not really." Um, <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, so that, uh, but it, and I never really, I don't think I ever really got good enough. But the the idea was that I could come, I would turn up, and there would be, I'd have the sheath of drawings under my hand. We'd say, "This is what we're going to do." And we're going to go through it, and then uh, and then it would be done, and and it kind of happened like that. And this is, uh, uh, but uh, these are still photographs. And this is this was a nice occasion um, that uh, when we're in the middle of building this. But it was also because it was being filmed. Uh, it was part of a film project for uh, um, uh, a, a, an arts council film, uh, and. Uh, uh, the day that they were filming at Chemco's, um, uh, suddenly these white overalls appeared. <laughs> <laughs> Derek was never... He, yeah. uh, um, uh, and uh, 
Um, so I'm there. I'm, in, I'm there in the back. Uh, um, Gary is actually Gary. Are you you're on the down. line down in there. I only got that to wear that open for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, um, but the um, so the uh, and to begin with, it was uh, it was difficult. Um, there were, you know, I'd kind of go in some some. I went. I was there very often. Uh, goes and I'd, you know, find little things written on the uh, on the piece of work. You know, like what is this, etc. <laughs> or words to that effect. <laughs> um, um, but uh, it was a kind of very steep learning curve, uh, and we learned to trust each other. Uh, uh, and uh, so this is uh, when it was delivered to the Serpentine Gallery uh, on the back of a uh, on the back of a truck. Uh, and uh, actually, this isn't what it was. We put it together at the Serpentine Gallery, and this is it being loaded up and then uh, turned over because the only way to put it together was, was on the flat side down. This is it kind of flying up in the air uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and going down. So um, uh, it worked. Uh, <laughs> And uh, uh, this piece of sculpture s is now in Spain uh, at the Banco Santander. Uh, it was installed there. Uh, um, first, it went to a, from here, it went to a Switzerland, uh, and then it went to uh, uh, a bank collection in Spain. So it's, uh, you know, and it, um, it had lots of things that I, uh, that I liked about it. The, uh, uh, I always like the way that the, this hard surface and then these stiffening plates, which I had to kind of learn about, actually kind of soften the, uh, um, uh, the, the inside. So it's got a kind of fleshy, uh, a fleshy inside. Um, so, uh, and that was a... Um, it was a project for a film, but it was also a kind of uh, a project for me to learn, a way of, of learning <laughs> about making and about. Uh, 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 it was very, very focused on uh, on the sculpture. I knew it was for a temporary exhibition, uh, but that, uh, uh, but I did want to kind of uh, leverage up my uh, um, uh, change the scale on which I make work and. Uh, um, Become involved in this, uh, um, in learning these other languages of uh, uh, of making. So that the next, um, and to build this bond, and the, uh, and it did, uh, and it did work. Like I said, I mean, I've been working, um, uh, I've worked with the same company, the same group of people for uh, for over thirty years. Um, the next was a. Um, uh, came from the gallery in New York uh, and was for a, uh, a project in Canada, in Toronto, uh, of which these are, uh, th of which this is uh, a fairly late, fairly late stage model. It's two, um, two curved pieces that kind of have this joint in the middle um, and one sits on uh, one side. It's maybe easier if you, this is, and this is chemical fabrications. And it's just outside, so you get an idea of the kind of scale of the uh, uh, of the structure. Uh, and these uh, um, these two pieces are set up in the uh, in the right relationship to each other. Um, the centerpiece hasn't been uh, hasn't been put on. Um, and uh, uh, actually, that's Derek in the corner there. Uh -huh. Um, I think I've got another photograph of Derek running away from the. <laughs> um, uh, and here is the the same sculpture as it was as it's installed, and it's still there. Yeah, it's currently being refurbished, but it's still uh, there. It's in the uh, it's the bottom end of a place called Young Young Street in Toronto, which is the longest street in Canada. Uh, it's two thousand miles long. Uh, and it's at the, on the edge of the lake, um, uh, 
uh, Lake uh, um, Ligiri. Um, uh, and it forms a kind of corner, uh, and uh, I wanted it to be um, both as if it was beach, but also a kind of place to stop. So built into it is this, uh, 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 where it sits up, is a, is a, you can sit uh, uh, and look at and be in, in the sculpture itself. Uh, so, uh, so this was a, uh, 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 this is a publicly funded uh, proposal, the, uh, um, a, what's called a percent for art scheme. Um, the money, the, the development was for these two towers, uh, and in order to, uh, um, in order to get to build the the towers, there had to be a public art uh, component. So um, this is um, this is actually worth three stories of the building, uh, uh, and uh, um, because of that. The, uh, the contract was very big uh, and, uh, uh, and I had to guarantee that I would deliver it because if I didn't deliver it, um, then I would be in trouble. Uh, and the developers, uh, uh, which were Olympia and York, would be even deeper in trouble. So I was um, uh, tremendously supported on the one hand uh, and did have some kind of power in the situation because, uh, um, uh, but I also had to be responsible. You know, I had to say, yes, it's going to be done, and yes, it will stand up, and yes, it won't fall down. And I had to trust that uh, um, Chemco uh, would, uh, would and could produce that, uh, and that we knew and trusted each other enough by that point. Uh, to produce such a complex structure uh, and to and to make it work. Um, the next one, uh, uh, or the, the, a cluster of them, came around at the uh, in the early end of the eighties, beginning of the nineties, uh, and the next one was for, uh, which also took quite a long time to happen, uh, it was for the University of Warwick. Uh, in Coventry, um, which involved four um, <coughs> four components, two steel components and two stainless steel components. The um, the, gr the MDF in the picture is uh, um, became stainless steel, and the uh, card uh, was or, was mild steel. So these uh, and at the time these models and the earlier models. They're made up from me cutting up my drawings and uh, assembling them. So the drawing, so drawing had become a kind of uh, uh, a way of testing a uh, uh, of testing a, of testing out whether a structure could work or not. Um, now in the in the works in the factory in the in the workshop, it's done it's done a bit different. But there was uh, at the at the time there was a. Uh, a kind of continue there was some sort of continuity between my uh, model making and the uh, uh, and my drawing and the kinds of things we made uh, which is which is kind of as we grow more and more uh, familiar with each other there's kind of slightly less and less that, the, that there's that strict connection my model making can be more approximate now um, so this is then so then here we are back again outside Kemco um, with the uh, with the work uh, erected at, uh, outside Chemco, um, and then uh, being erected, being put up on site in uh, uh, in the university. And the site was a uh, um, an old air hall site. Is uh, and actually, funny enough, I used to have a girlfriend at Warwick University. Uh, and uh, the, so the site that we have um, is what. Used, was called the air hall site. It was where the social clubs used to meet, uh, and it was a kind of dance venue in the uh, uh, in the early early seventies. So I'd, I'd probably been there, uh, or probably I had been there uh, to hear bands, uh, and it was now a, um, a kind of disused site. And the uh, 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 and I quite like the way the sculpture. I like the way the sculpture kind of. Um, uh, whereas in 
Toronto had been on a kind of brand new site. Here it was something that had a history to it. And where this piece sits is the residue of a, uh, um, uh, a chessboard where, they, where um, stone students used to play uh, uh, chess with giant, giant pieces. Um, and the uh, um, uh, and there's some game playing aspect to the to the way the work relates to each other. It also um, the work's called "Let's Not Be Stupid," um, which I think is quite a reasonable um, um, motto for a university. <laughs> uh, um, and uh, uh, there's some idea about there being a uh, um, discussion about constraints and liberty between the two between the two parts. You have a uh, the kind of cage part, but the uh, uh, but the cage kind of actually supports the uh, the piece that's protruding it, and then you have that kind of free ladder that goes between it and the, the but uh, but which does uh, um, uh, support the other piece on the ground. So there there is some. Um, uh, there, there, are, there are some ideas, and there's also that the way in which they kind of look like giant game pieces. Um, then, <coughs> uh, um, I'm starting to get a, a little freedom in the way that I made structures. I became kind of interested in the. Uh, uh, in the fact that you could, uh, by using a kind of curved section, uh, as, turn it around and you develop this kind of very complex, what looks like a very complex curve, but in fact is all based on, uh, um, uh, on drawn curves and then just fabricated. So this is a, uh, this was a, um, uh, this is a project in New Zealand. So things are kind of traveling around a bit in the world. Um, this is for a, uh, uh, a new development in New Zealand where I was asked um, uh, it wasn't a competition the one in Toronto was a competition um, the other th these and the other things haven't been competitions they've been things that I've been asked to do um, and the, um, being asked to do a project that has uh, uh, things don't really just come from nowhere uh, I went to uh, uh, I went to New Zealand to to, to look, uh, and uh, was very interested in the way they were making the building that was next that was associated with this. Um, they were using a very uh, a new technique developed by the Americans, whereby the building was kind of going in two directions at once. Um, so they were pile driving the um, the. <coughs> the basement floors and using the earth to kind of as almost as shuttering for the piles while at the same time building the uh, starting to build the store the, uh, the, uh, the floors on top of the uh, um, still setting um, basement and then they dig out and then dig uh, and pile down some more uh, and go up some more so that uh, and that process of uh, um, uh, whereas in Toronto, where it was, which was also a new building, what they'd done was they'd done a big hole and then they put a building inside it. Here, the the, uh, the process of building uh, gradually replaced the, the the ground that was there before. Um, the very beginning was to was to uh, dig trenches down and to pour um, retaining walls all around all around the side. So you just dug these trenches and then poured concrete into it. So the uh, it was stabilized at the side, and the uh, and the floors just moved up uh, a, a, a a week or two weeks at a time. Had this kind of uh, fast track uh, building, and I uh, I got very interested in that uh, uh, and how that related to uh, sort of some characteristics of a lot of New Zealand, uh, uh, both animals and plants, where there are, there are a lot of parasitic and. Uh, um, um, Parasitic worms or and parasitic plants, where one structure is gradually kind of replaces another structure. So the um, the way in which uh, I made the models for this was to to uh, uh, to make a 
um, originally to make a sculpture and then to festoon it or cover it with this sort of parasitic, uh, parasitic structure and then take it away. Uh, and, the, uh, and that, uh, and what, you, what you've got left behind uh, became the kind of basis for the, uh, for the sculpture itself. And the, uh, uh, so here's the, uh, here I am in uh, uh, New Zealand and uh, just after we kind of put it up. Um, uh, uh, and I uh, was starting to travel a bit with Derek. He was, uh, he was always very enthusiastic to go away on uh, um, far-flung trips. Uh, and uh, uh, and was, was good fun to travel with. And this one, uh, uh, this, uh, all the joints on this are kind of internal. Uh, so you, in order to make the join sort of that to that, you have to kind of go, you have to go down inside the, uh, um, uh, inside, the uh, inside the sculpture. And I was thinner then than I am now. Uh, and so I was doing a lot of the bolting up on the inside. Uh, and at one point I got stuck. <laughs> so, I, was, I mean, I, I was, and this massive Maori came along and just kind of pulled me out by the way. Well, then I, was, I was completely stuck inside the, uh, inside the sculpture. But the, um, uh, the so the, uh, and the sculpture's called Nobody Here But Us. Um, uh, uh, it, um, and here, are the, here it is in its uh, um, uh, scale and kind of uh, thing. So this was, again, this was made at Chemco, you know, and we, uh, uh, it's actually made of aluminium, uh, not, uh, not steel. Uh, and, the, and it was painted uh, in New Zealand, but all the, uh, all the parts are aluminium and, uh, and it's all uh, bolted together. And uh, these, so these, so this is a this is a fabrication with a, um, uh, everything laid on top, and then the sh uh, well, well the, the sheet underneath. Um, there weren't always big things. The, the, uh, the early nineties, uh, we began began to sort of. I, then I was beginning to become very um, confident. In my relationship and comfortable in my relationship with uh, uh, with Kempo as a fabricator. So this is these are uh, this is we're just I'm just installing a show in Germany here. But all of these pieces were made at Kempo. This is made from uh, tubular pipe. Uh, this is made from uh, spun uh, uh, spun aluminium spun aluminium kind of cut and assembled together. Uh, this is made from uh, uh, these pipes that you can see here are made from. Uh, uh, aluminium and the, the the works were actually dispersed around the uh, 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 around the building, and uh, you know then there were uh, um, kind of experimental works. And this is uh, uh, Gary will remember this one very well. Um, this is uh, uh, I had I did the float a piece of sculpture. Um, this is a small canal in uh, northern Germany, uh, and I made a piece of sculpture for, the, for two ends <coughs> on this little island. Uh, and we did test it on the canal at uh, um, uh, on the canal here, and it did uh, and it did float. Um, and uh, and here it, and here we are, kind of. Uh, uh, I'm in the boat here. Uh, bringing it in, looking like I'm about to harpoon it here, but actually it's behind me, it's kind of above. So the, the, the work floated between um, uh, two, two ends of a canal and was this uh, um, um, uh, there was an uh, uh, exploration of the surface of the water. Uh, uh, as if these, so the, um, and the way that these stainless steel pieces were made, um, which has then become something that's sort of, it's, and it's interesting how uh, uh, a process becomes something that you kind of really make a lot of. The way that the surface is made is by uh, uh, kind of inflating 
with water pressure, two sheets of, of, uh, um, uh, uh, of stainless steel that have been uh, um, um, spot welded together and when welded around the center and then pumped up and so you, it kind of expands uh, at the side. It doesn't, uh, it's not quite a kind of floating piece of steel because it has, it has underneath some sort of support. But the idea was somehow that the, um, the, 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 sur the water surface, which is what was uh, interesting to me, was kind of, um, uh, was made, um, the steel made it uh, still, but had the kind of complexities of reflection of a water surface. And, um, you know, there were other things that were uh, a bit off, more off-center. This was a, a stage set that I'd done, that I, that I did in 93. And here is the, uh, uh, this was a, 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 a structure which supported a hanging, uh, a hanging element, like a bellows that went up and down. Uh, I was working with a, uh, working with the dance company and uh, Kemco made the uh, um, uh, made the uh, this uh, this aluminium scaffolding structure uh, and also researched the uh, the motors to bring the thing up and down and this is the health and safety uh, <laughs> uh, photograph um, the, um, uh, walking up the jib of the crane. So, um, uh, though that crane was uh, uh, the most incredibly useful piece of equipment. Uh, and here's, um, uh, here's Derek again, walking off the, walking out, out of the picture. Um, getting near the end with Kemco, so this was uh, 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 something that went to Japan, and here uh, it was a remake of another piece of sculpture that was uh, um, uh, made originally in wood and, f and hardboard, and then we remade it in uh, aluminium and steel. And then it was installed uh, in, uh, uh, in Japan, and these are the photographs of the, uh, 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 of the installation around it. And it's, it's kind of a pity that I didn't have this as a larger image. It is, uh, as you put it, all vase. This is Derek in the picture, and he's wearing a T-shirt which says Kemco on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, which, you know, I mean, I thought was just fantastic that he kind of kept it up, you know. But, um, um, so by the end of, uh, uh, um, it sort of dropped off a bit with, uh, with Kemco. We carried on making a few uh, works together, but in 2004, and uh, Gary contacted me to say that actually he was setting up, he moved from Kemco, and, and all throughout all this time, uh, I worked, uh, Gary was, was a kind of constant present at, uh, at Kemco, either on the shop floor or in uh, 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 managing the team or helping me. He was always this kind of, I mean, I, I have this kind of fairly true to say I've kind of been picking Gary Chapman's brain for the past, uh, uh, for the past 30 years. And, and uh, he invited me to work uh, to work in the, with him and the firm that he was taking over, small, uh, nearby Kemco, Twin Engineering. And uh, uh, I was uh, very happy to do that because there were, uh, I was starting to have some ideas about the kinds of, uh, about different, different ways of working uh, and different um, uh, um, uh, approaches to using materials. And these, uh, uh, so these are uh, not really commissioned works. So now it's starting to be like in the gallery species that, that, that it just becomes a kind of, kind of part of the uh, 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 of a fairly continual process. So there are uh, there are more or less drawings or models for these, um, or the woody there would be a kind of like small model uh, for some of these, but the. Uh, 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 the, how these junctions work with these kind of tubular pieces um, it is something that is kind of, is, it's only really worked out on uh, 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 on the job itself because the, the the complexity of the joint and where these two meet is such that you need uh, 
that you, you kind of have to offer it up and kind of. Um, so these are various versions of, uh, or various uh, iterations of uh, uh, skeletal structures that I'd made originally in clay, um, and I'd made them in clay and then kind of hollowed them out and uh, and then transferred them into uh, into steel, uh, and uh, in a way the uh, all that remains of the original um, is a sort of is these points inside here, and if you imagine inside each tube, there's a sort of wire line. That would follow the, uh, that would be the, the drawing of the <coughs> original structure, so the wire line has kind of got puffed up and become, uh, and, it, um, uh, and I was uh, intrigued, by, or uh, uh, became kind of quite absorbed in, the, in that, um, process of uh, um, making something in one way and it becoming gradually abstracted and then um, uh, and then the abstraction becoming clothed in a different sort of material reality um, and so this is an early stage of uh, uh, of another one which became, which is uh, was made in clay and then these are the the small models for the uh, if you see each of those is a separate part, uh, and then the, uh, these are the small models of those separate parts, uh, and then this is the um, uh, the sculpture being put together, and these um, these points like here uh, are correspond to the um, the black lines on the uh, uh, on the. Uh, on the model, uh, and this is so. This is a um, three, the uh, the thing that where it started from was uh, uh, trying to bring three things together into the same space, uh, and seeing whether uh, three th three separate things could could all occupy the same space. Um, and this is the these are the pieces um, uh, separately before they're kind of rejoined. Uh, and this is the, the final location. So it was done in a, this is done for a site in Japan. Uh, this is uh, out in the, uh, uh, in the mountains in Japan. Uh, and so the, um, uh, the object, the, the sculpture's gone through a kind of, uh, um, uh, a process of, uh, 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 a, a complex process of making and a complex process of thinking uh, that has involved um, at many different points uh, a kind of interaction between uh, uh, between various uh, between various people and trying to uh, and trying to work out how it's done. I mean, there's even a uh, um, if you look in the back here, uh, we knew it was going to go to Japan. Uh, this is a, a model to the same scale of a shipping container uh, to see if actually the pieces fit into it. Uh, um, <coughs> uh, but, you know, all of this, um, you can't really draw this. You, you, this the thing has to be, uh, 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 the thing has to be made and the surface then has to be, uh, uh, um, um, worked over to get to the kinds of uh, uh, to get to the kind of quality of surface that we're sorry I'm going backwards um, uh, uh, that is that is wanted and the uh, stainless steel uh, we started to use this kind of um, uh, sometimes a polish but we've also started to use this uh, a really quite complex grinding on the surface which is like drawing uh, and gives you a very very interesting fluidity to the surface. It, uh, um, uh, uh, it changes with the light because of the angle of the, the grinding and the way that it reflects the light. So the, the surface is continually uh, uh, changing. Um, then, um, sort of, so from that we've, uh, uh, again, we've, you know, we've carried on, as I've said, now it's become a, uh, uh, a, a very
very close kind of relationship where a number of different th where numbers of different uh, projects we made. These were uh, this is a whole group of uh, um, uh, again stainless steel pieces where uh, two two different shapes are made to share a same uh, made to share one face, uh, and you have these two uh, um, these kind of twinned faces, um, and then that kind of uh, uh, this is in Spain. Uh, so these this is a similar process, but the uh, but the sharing of the faces is done with a um, uh, uh, with, with an angle rather than a kind of rounded rather than a round profile. Um, this was this is called the th between the three of us. So the um, and the uh, uh, the sculpture is kind of no individual element stands up, but it support but each individual element supports the other. So it's kind of uh, like three drunk guys kind of rolling out of a pub, uh, hand in hand, arm in arm. Or, you know, the between the three of us also has a kind of, you can also discuss it in kind of religious terms if you want. But, uh, uh, so, it, you know, had nice... Uh, um, and here, uh, similar kind of structure, so it's, but you can, this is uh, this kind of beautiful uh, liquid um, surface is just achieved by kind of uh, very meticulous polishing. A very meticulous grinding uh, on this on the stainless steel it gives this kind of extraordinary rich surface. So the um, uh, um, the, the material has um, uh, the act of the tool on the material does reveal reveals qualities. Uh, here's another one that was 2013 in. Outside a museum in Switzerland, and uh, I talked a bit about the one that was in the water uh, and that kind of fluidity. Uh, we th uh, then we began kind of thinking about this as a, this just as a surface, and I also thought about them as kind of transmitters, um, uh, reflectors, transmitters. Uh, so the uh, some of them, uh, so it's a bit to do with counting the numbers of holes, the way they join together. Uh, but also to do with that, the f uh, um, fluidity and stasis, so that the, uh, where are we? So that if you had, uh, uh, as you move around it, these kind of, uh, um, the, light, the light changes, but these, uh, the numbers are always, there's always some relationship to number, I'm kind of a bit of a number, uh, number freak, so there's a, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, one, two, three, four, five. So these are odd numbers. These are all odd numbers. And they add up to a kind of, uh, would add up to a prime number. Um, and the, uh, the various, um, <coughs> the ways in which the um, surface behaves uh, is dependent on both slight variations in the, uh, in the th in the pattern of the spot welds, and also slight variations in, pr in pressure, uh, and uh, in changes of thickness in the material. Originally, the material was slightly thinner. We used a slightly thinner material, and we got uh, we tended to get this kind of uh, more uh, uh, sort of straightforward. So now the material is slightly thicker. You get this kind of fluid uh, look to it. Uh, and it's expanded into colour. These are uh, uh, these are quite uh, really quite recent works. Um, and uh, the last one was uh, again, which is the link between that and the second part of this thing. This was a project in Japan, uh, and this these series of photographs actually show you quite well the um, the translation between what starts as tube. Uh, and then it's cut and uh, reconfigured uh, into these uh, uh, into these complex curves. Uh, so it's a very simple. So it starts as a very simple material that's uh, uh, that's basically just tube material and is uh, uh, is cut and recombined. Uh, these are installation shots in Tokyo. For the uh, so these uh, uh, those. Uh, 
Um, this is one. This is one element which then gets stood up. This is the these are the profiles of the ground plan, of the ground plan. Um, this is the structure inside. This is one of the uh, standing elements. Uh, it's the sculpture is called Grove, uh, and these are. Uh, this is the the site in Japan where the pieces have been. Playing. This it was unloaded at night. We have to do it at night. Uh, this is the the truck arriving in Japan in, in the, on the site, and this is the uh, assembling on the site. And the uh, uh, here's the crew and, uh, and the sculptures uh, uh, behind us. Uh, it doesn't say Kemco. It says Richard Deacon. <laughs> um, um, it doesn't say twin either, sorry. It should, it should have said twin. Uh, this is the, uh, so this is the, the, the last shot of this kind of uh, bit. And it um, uh, tells you a little bit about how, uh, um, how wonderful um, this material is looking and the kinds of complexities of the relationship between that. Um, the parts. Uh, now on to Milton Keynes. Um, because of the the, uh, the very long-standing, uh, because of the amount of time that I've kind of been coming back and forth, um, then uh, it's always been slightly in my mind that it would be a it would be a very good idea. Uh, to make to have a work that was associated around here, we've talked about it. I've talked about it a bit with, uh, with Gary sometimes, and the, uh, and so when Anthony kind of said, uh, uh, "Would I be interested?" I was uh, I, I I was very enthusiastic, um, and the idea of uh, work on a roundabout for Milton Keynes, I think, is. Uh, um, uh, uh, is uh, perfect for me. I've never, uh, I've never actually done a work on a roundabout, uh, and although it's a bit of a cliche, and uh, the uh, and it, the <coughs> there are a lot to choose from, and uh, <laughs> um, we did make a kind of selection, um, and, just, and Claire took me out in her car. Uh, and we drove around, and, and it, we we did look at you know several, and it became kind of clear that this uh, uh, the one here was the one that um, kind of satisfied what I was interested in, uh, which had to do with its kind of I think it has to do with its visibility, um, the fact that the trees that are already on the site are in themselves quite sculptural. Uh, uh, and the so that it's not a kind of bald area, uh, and it, it, its size and the way in which you can approach it from uh, different ways. Uh, and now, if I can get this to work, uh, here we go. So this is Claire and me driving. Come on. We didn't stop there. So. Yeah, it's not loaded fully. Click. Uh, get it to play a bit more. It doesn't really matter. It does say it stopped, but on the... Oh, well, never mind. Uh, it's Fox Mill and Roundabout, anyway. Uh, on, the f on the version, I've got, it kind of comes up and you can see Fox Mill and Roundabout. Uh, this is the, uh, um, uh, the result of a rainy day Standing in the roundabout, mapping the trees and measuring the measuring the distance between the trees, um, and these are so. Um, uh, if I go 
back a little bit. Uh, well, I haven't got to fret it off of the roundabout. Um, so it has these um, uh, has this group of poplar trees standing on it, um, and I was interested in the uh, in, in something which would stand in relationship to the trees, uh, but be slightly above it. Uh, and I'd been thinking I'd been thinking about um, uh, a certain kind of engineering structure for a long time, um, and the, so these are just my photographs of uh, um, uh, pylons and gasometers uh, in various places through the world, and uh, there's some you know real elegance to uh, uh, the, those kinds of transmission equipment, uh, and and also. Um, on the bottom, right in the, hidden in the corner, is a uh, uh, is an Islamic tower, uh, and these are uh, radar uh, uh, towers, uh, and so the uh, and there seems to be some sense in which, in relationship to Bletchley uh, or Milton Keynes, you might be interested in uh, in radar towers because of the. Uh, because of the history of the communications, but it also uh, uh, these are. Uh, but I also remembered that um, going up and down the M1 as a as a child, when we passed through this area, this was this is what you saw, uh, and all of that's kind of gone now. The, uh, the, the, there are none of the so the uh, the brick towers and the the the, uh, the brick kiln towers and the, the chip brick kiln chimneys. Um, radar towers uh, and pylons all seem to kind of come together. Now, why? And it um, uh, so there is uh, uh, um, so the shape of what I uh, uh, wanted to do kind of comes at, comes from uh, thinking about the, those kind those kinds of things. And the, um, 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 I came up with this. Uh, uh, rather broad-based uh, uh, structure with a um, uh, with a platform on top, uh, and that the platform uh, would it would be work. Um, uh, the platform had a uh, a design or a shape on top. That uh, these are the photographs of the model, so you can sort of uh, uh, see that. So the background to the tower, I think, is. Uh, to the kind of pylon shape, I think is fairly, uh, you know, it's fairly clear. The why, uh, but the shape on the top um, is more is harder to uh, to explain, um, and it does relate to um, a set of drawings that I uh, that I made, uh, of which these are a few, uh, and which uh, I called an alphabet because they were. 26 of them, and, they, uh, and those drawings then became um, a series of uh, 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 works in various metals uh, that, again, we've made with uh, Gary using different, la different processes, different ways of folding either uh, steel or aluminium in order to make up these geometric shapes. So there's two kinds of languages. There's a language of drawing and there's a language of, uh, uh, of steel bending. And uh, um, in the tower itself, the, uh, in, the, in these towers, the things that uh, uh, both building in terms of bricks and uh, transmission receiver in, in terms of radar code making, uh, in, terms of, uh, um, in terms of Bletchley's history um, through... Uh, uh, through the um, um, Second World War, um, all kind of come together to make this, uh, um, uh, to give the kind of background to the to the thing on the top, which uh, you know is connected to. So these are quite, these are quite these are structures that I'd made um, uh, slightly earlier. So they they'd also kind of come in. So that's the 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 the, the I think the, what you have on top is a uh, uh, is a version of, of a condensed version of a uh, transmitter, receiver, uh, translator, whatever, and that's.
about it, I think. Thank you very much, Richard. I, I think Richard could um, make a, a similar presentation with any number of materials. I'm sure you could do one in wood, in clay, and probably uh, a lot of other different materials that, that, that you've worked with. But thank you very much for a very illuminating talk. I, I hope you've all got a better idea of um, Richard's work in general, and also his proposal um, for here in Milton Keynes. If you do have any and, and that I've been, I mean, let's, and also that I've been fantastically supported by a, a group of really capable um, makers here. You know, it's, uh, uh, and it's something to celebrate that there is uh, um, in this environment a uh, um, group of really, really capable people who are able to um, produce things which are. Uh, from New Zealand to uh, Scandinavia. I think that's a really important point. It, it's almost a just pop <laughs> part, part of a secret history of Milton Keynes that Richard's been producing his work with Gary uh, in Bletchley, in Milton Keynes, and exporting it all over the world. So that is, is, is a really important celebration. And also, the sculpture is actually a gift from a local resident to the people of Milton Keynes in time for its 50th birthday, which is another great celebration, I hope. There's a question at the back over there. Do we have an idea of the height? Um, it depends on the uh, 25 metres. 20 to 25 metres. We have to get a, an, a, it should be just above the trees. And so we're tr we need to work out the, uh, um, uh, the, the height, whether the trees are at their maximum height now. So I, uh, I scaled it twice. At 20 meters, 20 meters and 25 meters. You've shown so 22 us, and a half is probably the answer. No, no. You've shown us some amazing pieces of your, of your work, yeah. making a big impact across a number of different cultural settings around the world. I can't think of peoples that are more different than the Japanese, the Swiss, the Spanish, and the Canadians. Does your relationship with your client in each case um, influence in some way? what it is you offer them in the, the installation that you're, you're bringing to them. And I've got a, a supplementary, which you might imagine would be coming after that. Um, uh, if someone comes to me and knows what they want, then I tell them that I'm the wrong person to ask. Uh, if someone comes to me um, with a um, very open um, uh, attitude, then it then it works, and um, it's very hard. To, I mean, things. I very I go to the place. I mean, there's you saw there's actually a lot of work there, which is just is kind of like studio. It's studio work. It doesn't have. It's not. It's made for gallery shows, but in big commissions, there's always uh, there's always a site visit. Uh, um, uh, but the, for example, the one in Canada, the early one in Canada, the um, the real source for the work was a piece of found rubbish on the site, uh, which was uh, had something like that. so. It can be something kind of quite small rather than something uh, and. Uh, it can, or it could be a bit of rock or something. So the thing in New Zealand about this structure, uh, changing structure, was very specifically tied to that. Uh, and an observation about uh, a, a construction technique seeming to kind of be very close to a, um, uh, something that was common in the, uh, in the uh, flora and fauna of, uh, of New Zealand. So the, uh, what... Um, uh, what tricks you off is uh, um, is sometimes memory, sometimes uh, conversation. It can be technical. It can be technical. So it's all sorts of things. Uh, uh, it has to do with contact, um, and it uh, and it. Uh, but uh, but um, most of that and the contact is with uh, is not often with a huge number of people. It's not. Um, but it, it, it has to do with kind of looking into the, looking into the place. Yes. Yeah, so the supplementary question is the supplementary question is, is, but it's more a supposition. I think from what you just said, um, 
the piece that you've uh, brought to Milton Keynes derives not so much from the relationship with the client, but from your own understanding of the the, the sort of intrinsic nature. Well, I think I mean I think that's a good point because actually what the uh, uh, what this is is so that I've showed you um, these. Uh, where are we? Uh, uh, I'm not sure I'm going to get back there. It doesn't matter. The images I showed you come from all over the world. The pylons. Uh, they're from India, they're from China, they're from Japan, they're from the United States. So the um, there is a certain commonality to those kinds, of, and it's, there are differences, quite subtle differences, between the way that electricity transmission lines are uh, constructed and the vocabularies of, uh, uh, of, building, uh, uh, of building pylons. But yes, those have been, uh, but it's, I brought those to the side, I brought that thing to the side. Um, uh, and it, the, um, and I think the notion of uh, uh, um, transmission, partly to do with that remark I made about you know things being made here and going all over the place, that it's a kind of inverse of that, that the, uh, there's some there's some relationship to transmission at all. I have uh, two questions: one about your overall career, and second about the sculpture. On your website, I took a look this afternoon, you mentioned the importance of performance, mm -hmm. but you never mentioned it tonight at all within your entire presentation. I was a bit surprised about that. I did mention it. Oh, did you? Well, you did show the stage piece you created. No, I mentioned before. it before that. Okay. Well, I must have missed it then. All right. uh, and the second one is, within the sculpture, is there any light involved? Um, there will be light, yes. So it will be illuminated at night? Yeah. Um, uh, what I said was in relationship to the uh, uh, Canadian piece was that you were able to be uh, inside and uh, outside. And I was also talking about now. I may get, I'm always talking about Charu's house. I've been talking about that upstairs, about the staircases in uh, Maison de Verre. Uh, Yes, I was, yeah. and uh, yeah. I did say that. Yeah. And that the way in which you use the, the staircase um, uh, changed the way you related to the space, etc., etc. Et um, performance. So performance was uh, uh, is connected to the way in which you use uh, uh, with tool and material and body. I mean, so that was. Kind of, that, I, I think that's kind of. Uh, um, uh, I tried to. To say that uh, somehow the, um, the when I first started with making working with Chemco, there was a deliberate attempt to alienate myself from uh, uh, the manufacturing process to kind of give it to someone else. But the but then it comes back as a sort of uh, uh, as a uh, as a relationship. I, I think it's absolutely fascinating hearing about your long term relationship with, with mm -hmm. Chemco. Wonderful bit of advertising for Chemco, I must say. It doesn't exist um, anymore. I know, and, and, and twin engineering. And I don't know whether my question is for you or Gary, in a sense, but if you've become more um, interested in the manufacturing process uh, over time, which is what I was taking away from what you were saying, do you think that your manufacturing team have become more artistic? Uh, that's probably a question for Gary. But, uh, <laughs> um, uh, I think it's uh, the way that I work. Um, with uh, n a number of different people, uh, have very long-standing relationships with numbers of different people, uh, and uh, the um, uh, and we learn to talk to each other, uh, and um, I take ideas from them and exploit them. <laughs> And, uh, uh, and I take all the credit. <laughs> uh, and I think that's how it works. <laughs> one last question, just briefly. Whereabouts in New Zealand was the New Zealand one? Uh, in Auckland, in the ABS uh, uh, building. 
uh, worked with Hamish Keith. Uh, you, you're a New Zealander? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Hamish Keith was the commissioner. I think he's dead now, Hamish Keith, but uh, um, uh, yeah, it was in Auckland, not, not in Christchurch. It just mm -hmm. suffered a bit. Great. Well, on that note, thank you again very much, Richard. And we're hoping um, that the sculpture will actually be erected around October next year. Um, so you'll probably be seeing quite a lot of Richard around so, in, in the coming months. But a huge thanks again for Richard uh, being here.